chapter 1, we're going we're gonna to talk about the birth of Jesus and the events that surround the birth of Jesus from now till the end of the, of the year. Today we're going to be focusing on the story of Mary, and we'll progress along on Sundays and Wednesdays, kind of looking at some of the key, key figures and key events over the next couple of weeks, because Christmas will be here before we know it. It is right around the corner. Luke chapter 1, we'll start in verse 26. Luke chapter 1. Verse 26, we'll read kind of a big section here. We'll just read through all of it, kind of get the the idea of what's going on here. Then we'll pray, and then we'll talk for a few minutes. So let's read through the text. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. In the sixth month, now a little context before we start, that's in the sixth month of of Elizabeth's pregnancy. In the verses preceding this, we we are told about a woman named Elizabeth who, as unlikely as it may seem, was going to have a child in her old age. And so, in the sixth month of her pregnancy, we see these events unfolding. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Rejoice, favored woman, the Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. His reign, excuse me, he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary asked the angel, How can this be, since I have not been intimate with a man? The angel replied to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And consider your relative, Elizabeth. Even she has conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called childless. For nothing will be impossible with God. I am the Lord's slave, said Mary. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel left her. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for these good words. We thank you for what these words are telling us about, what these words were preparing Mary for, and and what we come and celebrate today, and that is a Savior who has been born to us, a Savior who has given his life for us in Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, maybe these are words that many of us have heard many times, but dear Lord, let us Let us hear these words today. Perhaps there is something you want to speak to us. Maybe even now as we have read your word, dear Lord, your Holy Spirit has already pointed something out and revealed something to us. Dear Lord, we want to hear from you today. We want you to speak to us. I pray that you would hide me behind the cross, that you would help me to preach and to teach in a way that brings glory to you. Dear Lord, I cannot bring about any good word today if it does not come from you. So God, I pray that you do the talking. And I pray that every one of us this morning will... Do the listening. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we talk about the events that are soon to transpire here, we first need to perhaps explore the question of how did we get here? Now, here in the book of Luke, we're we're just starting off what we would call the New Testament. We, we see the, the, the main character in this portion of the story is Mary. We see other characters that we have seen before in the Scripture. Gabriel, we see Gabriel back in the book of Daniel. And, and we see reference to the Messiah. And this is not the first reference to the Messiah. The Old Testament is full of references to a Messiah who is to come. You see, in the beginning, God created all things, and things were beautiful until sin entered into the picture. 
And the whole Old Testament is, is full of God's desire to have a relationship with humanity, for humanity to be restored. And so the whole Old Testament covers God choosing a people through which the Messiah would come. God choosing a people and providing for his people and seeking to give his people a place of rest and give them a promised land, which he did. But all throughout God's dealing with his people, God's people were continually disobedient. They continually sinned against God. They continually turned against God. They turned to other gods. They, they tried to do things their way and would get themselves in all kind of trouble. And they would oftentimes face God's judgment. But God was faithful to those who were faithful to him. And he always continued to be with his people. He always continued to be with his faithful remnant. And all throughout the Old Testament, we are told about a Messiah who is going to come about a Savior who is going to come. And as the Old Testament continues to unfold, God's people continue to live in more disobedience until ultimately they are taken into captivity. What few of them are left, but there's always that faithful remnant who remained faithful to God, who continued to seek God, and God was faithful to them. And God restored them to their land. God restored their temple, and God continued to be with them and help them get on their feet and that takes us all the way to the end of what we call the Old Testament. And then for approximately 400 years, things were somewhat silent. Now, I won't say completely silent. I'm not suggesting that God was, was uninvolved. And certainly there are things that happened in that time period between what we call the Old Testament and the New Testament. But there was a, a period of time there where things were not really like they had been in the years prior. And then comes the New Testament. And then comes the one thing that all the people had been waiting for, and that was the coming of the Messiah, the coming of Jesus Christ. And here the story has somewhat of a new beginning. Here we are soon to be introduced to the Messiah. Now, that, not, that, not that Jesus was created in this moment of his birth. Jesus is eternal. He has always been. But in this portion of the story... It's a beginning of sorts. It's a beginning of the ministry of Jesus and the person of Jesus that we will see as the Scripture continues on throughout the New Testament. And so here in this story, we see a new beginning, and this new beginning starts with Mary. Now, we don't know much about Mary. Mary is unknown to us before this portion of the story. But one thing we do see in this text is that Mary was favored by God. Mary was certainly afraid when all of these things transpired, when Gabriel appeared to her and began to speak to her. You can only imagine how scary that must be. You and I would be just as scared today if an angel were to speak to us, no matter what they said, much less if they were to tell us news like that this angel was telling Mary. Oh, by the way, Mary, you're about to give birth to Jesus. You're about to give birth to the Messiah. You're about to have a son. Now, the fact that a woman was going to have a son was nothing unique. Mary certainly knew about those types of things, even though she had had no children to this point. But there was something quite unique about her situation. Oh, she knew about having children, but wait a minute, uh, Mr. Angel. Uh, I've never been with a man before, so how exactly is this going to work? And the angel told her something that's really unexplainable, something that's miraculous. And he said, God will overshadow you. And it is by God through the Spirit that you will conceive and that you will give birth to a son. And what a powerful thing that we don't want to miss there is that Jesus, he came from a human birth. He came through Mary and Jesus was 100% fully human just as you and I are. He lives as you and I do. He had to struggle with some of the same things that you and I struggle with. He knew what pain was. Jesus was fully human in every way. But Jesus was also quite unique in that he was the Son of God. He was completely God in every way. He was 100% the Son of God. He's very unique in that way, and it's a, a beautiful thing that's really perhaps hard for us to even comprehend and wrap our mind around. But here in the story, we're introduced to the beginning of, 
of a, of a great story, a story that's, that's been going all throughout the Old Testament, but now it's come to fruition. A Messiah that's been looked for and waited on by many for hundreds and thousands of years, and now we finally begin to see this story unfold. Finally, the Messiah is going to come on to the scene, and of all ways for God to accomplish this, he does it through the birth of a child. Nothing Nothing extravagant, nothing spectacular, nothing miraculous. But instead, he chose Mary, a young girl who was favored by him. And he said, it is through you that I am going to bring about the Messiah. And Mary's response at the end of this, of this, of this passage, Mary's response is so beautiful. She says, I am the Lord's slave. May it be done to me according to to your word. Now, we're going to talk about Jesus and the importance of Jesus. That's going to come as we continue to talk about this story as it unfolds, but let us today focus on Mary for just one moment. On the response of Mary for just one moment. That God came to her and God says, you are the one I have chosen. You are the one that I want to use. You are the vessel through which I am going to work miraculous things, through which the Messiah, the Savior of the world, is going to come. I have chosen you to be an intricate part of this unbelievably miraculous plan that is so awesome and so amazing. I have chosen you. And what a beautiful response that Mary gave. I am the Lord's slave. Whatever you say, God, your will be done. So how does those things apply to us today? Well, I can assure you today that none of us are going to give birth to the Messiah. But I also believe today that God still uses humanity to carry out His work and to carry out His will. Now, God could speak and things could happen, and God could choose any variety of ways in which He wants to work to accomplish His will in this world. But of all the ways that God could work, He chooses to use you and I. And that's the craziest thing I have ever heard. Now, I look at my life and I say, why in the world would God choose me? Maybe you look at your life and you say, why in the world would God choose me? God chooses us. Of all the broken and and weak and, and just sinful things that God could choose, God chooses the humanity which He loves and which He desires to restore, the humanity that He wants to walk with Him. And God says, yes, I have a great plan. Yes, I've brought about the Messiah to, to fulfill all things, but I want to use you to help build my kingdom. I want to use you to help spread the good news. I want to use you to tell people about Mary and about the child that she gave birth to who is the Savior of the world. And God today, I still believe for every one of us in this room, he wants to use us in some way. But the question that we must answer today is will we be willing? Will we be willing to allow God to use us? Now, I don't know what God may call you to do in your life. I don't know in which way God wants to use you to help build his kingdom. But I can tell you that I believe that every person who has put their faith in this Messiah that Mary gave birth to, God wants to use to build his kingdom. There is something that God has for all of us. And perhaps there's something that God is calling you to today. Perhaps there's something that God has been placing on your heart and something that God wants to do, and God has, 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 has let you know that you are the one that I have chosen for this task. Maybe God sends an angel to speak to you. Maybe he simply speaks to you through a still, small voice. Maybe he's been speaking through you to his word. But is God speaking to you today in some way? Is there something that God is calling you to? And if he is... What is your response? Wouldn't it be a beautiful thing if we always said yes to God when he called on us? But the fact of the matter is is that sometimes we say no. And that's a sad thing. Think about Mary here. Think about how blessed. We, We celebrate 
the greatness of, of the blessing that, that Mary got to participate in in bringing forth the, the Son of God. Man, what a blessed woman she is. And as you continue to read through the text, she even says so. I am so blessed and people will call me blessed. And indeed we do. Even still today we call Mary blessed. But what if Mary would have said no way? What if the angel would have come to her and she would have said no way? Not me. I'm not the one for the job. Now, certainly there's no doubt that God would have found another. But what a tragedy it would be if God were to call us to do something that was part of his will, that was something that he wanted to do to build his kingdom, that there was some way that he wanted to use us. And what a tragedy it would be for us today if God comes to us and if God speaks to you and if God says, I have chosen you, and you say, not me, Lord. What a tragedy that would be. Now, no doubt our saying no is not going to stop the Lord's plans. God will find one who is faithful. God will find one who is obedient. But wouldn't it be fantastic if, the, fantastic if that was you and if that was me today? That if God were to call on us today, that we would be so faithful as Mary would, that we would say, Lord, I am yours. Lord, I hear what you say. I am your servant. I am your slave. Whatever your will be, dear Lord, may it be done. Perhaps that's what some of us need to say today. Maybe there are some things that God has put in your life, some things that God has called you to, and for too long maybe you have said no. And maybe God is still calling. Maybe God is still working in your life. And maybe today it's time for us to learn from the response of Mary. No matter what God calls us to, no matter how big, no matter how crazy, no matter how scary it may be, it was certainly scary and crazy for Mary, but she heard all these things that the angel presented to her. She heard the will of God, and her response was, God, I am your servant. And that needs to be our attitude today. That needs to be our heart today, that God would begin to do something in us. And who's not to say that there's not something that God may do in us if we say yes? If there's not something that God is not ready to do right now, that God is calling us to, that God has prepared us for, that he's strengthened us in some way, that he's given us all the skills we need and all the strength that we don't have, he says, I'll give it to you. And maybe today God is calling you to do something to build his kingdom. Jesus has established the kingdom, absolutely. It is the birth of Christ. It is the work of Christ, crucified and resurrected, that has established the kingdom of God. But God has not finished. God is still calling people to come into that kingdom. And God is still calling people to do His work and to do His will. And it may be that God is calling you today or will call you in the future to do something. But the question is... What will our response be to the Lord? Praise the Lord that there are those who are faithful like Mary, who hear the word of God, and who say, yes, God. Whatever you call me to, I will do it. And maybe there are things before you today, and they are too big for you, and you say, man, this is, this is bigger than anything I can do. And they are too scary for you. And you, you are too weak to do them. And, and maybe in your mind you, you justify saying no to God by giving all your excuses. But perhaps today is the day that you say, God, I don't know that I really understand all that you're calling me to. I don't understand how you can use me. I don't understand, God, how you can accomplish anything. God, I don't understand how me doing this thing is going to do anything good. But God, I believe that you have called me to it. And whether I understand it or not, God, here I am, send me. I don't know how well Mary understood everything that was said. That's some crazy stuff that the angel told her. Some hard stuff to wrap our head around. And it was probably hard stuff for her to wrap our head around. But when she heard it, she said, this is God's will. This is God's word. And I am a servant of God. Perhaps for some of you today, you are God's children and maybe he wants you to serve him in some way. Perhaps you come here today and, and maybe, maybe, maybe God hadn't called you to serve him in some way yet because maybe you're not his yet. Here in the story, 
Mary was a favored woman. That, that, that leads us to think that, hey, Mary was a righteous and godly woman, and that's why she was chosen. And I can assure you that God wants to choose all of us to come into his kingdom so that he can use all of us to help build his kingdom. But maybe for some today, maybe this is the beginning of your story. No, it's not that your life hasn't existed before this point. You probably could write pages about your life up to this point. But every story, sometimes even in the midst of a story, it has a new beginning. And for the story of Jesus here, it is somewhat of a new beginning of a story that is throughout the pages of Scripture. And perhaps for some of you today, God is saying, I want to start a new beginning in your life today. I want you to put your faith in this Savior that came through Mary. Perhaps God has already been dealing on you. He's dealing with you. He's been convicting you. He's been working on you. You know that there are some things in your life that aren't right. You know that there's some sin there. You know that you just don't feel joy. You don't feel happiness. You know that you're just tired of living for the world. And I want to tell you today is a day of new beginnings for you if you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Today is the day that God says, come to me. Today is the day that perhaps God wants to tell you, you are mine and I want to use you and I want to call on you and I want to let you be part of this great plan that's fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Mary gives us the ultimate response of how we should respond to God. The question today is how will you respond to God? Whatever it is that you're going through in your life, Whatever it is that you may feel like God has put on you, wherever you are, whatever you brought you to this place, whatever you see in the Word of God when you read it, when you hear it, whatever it may be, if God has spoken to you in some way, what is your response to the Lord today? Mary's response was, Lord, I'm yours. I'm yours, God. I'm here to serve you. I hope that will be each of our responses today. I hope that we will be those who seek to serve the Lord who came and gave his life on a cross for us in Jesus Christ more than we would seek to serve ourselves. But too many times we can't serve the Lord because we are too busy serving ourselves. But perhaps this season, this time of year, is a good time for us to switch gears. Perhaps it's a good time for us to refocus and not focus on serving ourselves and our desires but serving the Lord and serving those who are around us. Mary heard the Lord speak, and she said, Lord, here I am to serve you. If we hear the Lord speak today, let us be so faithful to do the same thing. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you. We thank you for your good word, and we thank you for, we thank you for the beautiful story of Mary. Even what little we know about Mary, dear Lord, in the pages of Scripture, we thank you for the beautiful woman that she is, God. We thank you for her obedience to you. We thank you for the way that she praises you, dear Lord, and rejoices in you as the Scripture continues upon hearing this good news, upon looking forward to the birth of Jesus. And God, I pray that you would help us to follow that example. Dear Lord, maybe there are some here today and they have never put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. God, I pray that today through your word that they would have seen that a Savior has come, that a Messiah has come in Jesus. And as we see through the Scriptures and as we continue to read, dear Lord, that Messiah is Jesus, dear Lord. And I pray that if there is one today that does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that today they would put their faith in Jesus. God, maybe there are some here today and, and they're yours. And maybe there are some that you've really been calling to do something and they know it. And maybe, maybe God, they've been saying no. But God, I pray that you wouldn't give them peace, that you'd continue to, to bear with them and continue to call them, dear Lord, that today that they would say yes to you, dear Lord. That God, for those who are yours, that we would, we would never forget, dear Lord, that we are your servants, dear Lord, that we don't live to serve ourselves, but God, we live to serve you. And Mary shows us the most beautiful example of that in this passage today. So God, let us, let us follow that example. God, if you've spoken to somebody, if you're calling to somebody today, I pray that they would hear. I pray that they would listen. I pray that they would respond, not with a no, but that they would respond with a yes, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray it. Amen.